The Banu Kainuka Arabic, Banu Kinka Hebrew, Bani Kink also spelled Banu Kainuka, Banu Kainuka, Banu Kainuka, Banu Kainuka was one of the three main Jewish tribes living in the 7th century of Medina, now in Saudi Arabia. In 624, the great grandfather of Banu Kainuka tribe is Kainuka ibn Amchal ibn Munshi ibn Yohanan ibn Benjamin ibn Saran ibn Naphtali ibn Hay ibn Moses, and they are descendant of Manasseh ibn Joseph ibn Jacob ibn Isaac, son of Abraham. They were expelled during the invasion of Banu Kainuka, after breaking the treaty known as the Constitution of Medina. <laughs> Background In the 7th century, the Banu Kainuka were living in two fortresses in the southwestern part of the city of Yathrib, now Medina, having settled there at an unknown date. Although the Banu Kainuka bore mostly Arabic names, they were both ethnically and religiously Jewish. They owned no land, earned their living through commerce and craftsmanship, including goldsmithery. The marketplace of Yathrib was located in the area of the town where the Kainuka lived. The Banu Kainuka were allied with the local Arab tribe of Khazraj and supported them in their conflicts with the rival Arab tribe of Oz. <inaudible> Arrival of Muhammad In September 622, Muhammad arrived at Yatrib now called as Medina with a group of his followers, who were given shelter by members of all indigenous tribes of the city who came to be known as the Ansar. He proceeded to set about the establishment of a pact, known as the Constitution of Medina, between the Muslims, the Ansar, and the various Jewish tribes of Yathrib to regulate the matters of governance of the city, as well as the extent and nature of inter-community relations. Conditions of the pact, according to traditional Muslim sources, included boycotting the Quraysh, abstinence from extending any support to them, assistance of one another if attacked by a third party, as well as defending Medina, in case of a foreign attack." The nature of this document is recorded by Ibn Ishaq and transmitted by Ibn Hisham as the subject of dispute among modern historians many of whom maintain that this treaty is possibly a collage of agreements, oral rather than written, of different dates, and that it is not clear when they were made or with whom. Topic. Expulsion In March 624, Muslims led by Muhammad defeated the Meccans of the Banu Quraysh tribe in the Battle of Badr. Ibn Ishaq writes that a dispute broke out between the Muslims and the Banu Kainuka the allies of the Khazraj tribe soon afterwards. When a Muslim woman visited a jeweler's shop in the Kainuka marketplace, she was molested. The goldsmith, a Jew, pinned her clothing such that, upon getting up, she was stripped naked. A Muslim man coming upon the resulting commotion killed the shopkeeper in retaliation. A mob of Jews from the Kainuka tribe then pounced on the Muslim man and killed him. This escalated to a chain of revenge killings, and enmity grew between Muslims and the Banu Kainuka. Traditional Muslim sources view these episodes as a violation of the constitution of Medina. Muhammad himself regarded this as casus belli. Western historians, however, do not find in these events the underlying reason for Muhammad's attack on the Kainuka. According to F. E. Peters, the precise circumstances of the alleged violation of the Constitution of Medina are not specified in the sources. According to Fred Donner, available sources do not elucidate the reasons for the expulsion of the Kainuka. Donner argues that Muhammad turned against the Kainuka because as artisans and traders, the latter were in close contact with Meccan merchants. Weinsink views the episode cited by the Muslim historians, like the story of the Jewish goldsmith, as having no more than anecdotal value. He writes that the Jews had assumed a contentious attitude towards Muhammad and as a group possessing substantial independent power, they posed a great danger. Weinsink thus concludes that Muhammad strengthened by the victory at Badr, soon resolved to eliminate the Jewish opposition to himself. Norman Stillman also believes that Muhammad decided to move against the Jews of Medina after being strengthened in the wake of the Battle of Badr. Muhammad then approached the Banu Kainuka, gathering them in the marketplace and addressing them as follows. To which the tribe replied, Shibli Namani and Safi al Mubarakbari view this response as a declaration of war. According to the Muslim tradition, the verses 310 13 of the Quran were revealed to Muhammad following the exchange. Muhammad then besieged the Banu Kainuka for 14 or 15 days, according to Ibn Hisham, after which the tribe surrendered unconditionally. It was certain, according to Wat, that there were some sort of negotiations. 
At the time of the siege, the Kanaka had a fighting force of 700 men, 400 of whom were armored. Watt concludes, that Muhammad could not have besieged such a large force so successfully without Kanaka's allies' support. After the surrender of Banu Kanaka, Abdullah ibn Ubay, the chief of a section of the clan of Khazraj, pleaded for them. According to Ibn Ishaq, according to William Montgomery Watt, Abd Allah ibn Ubay was attempting to stop the expulsion, and Muhammad's insistence was that the Kanaka must leave the city, but was prepared to be lenient about other conditions. Ibn Ubay's argument was that presence of Kanaka with 700 fighting men can be helpful in the view of the expected Meccan onslaught. Because of this interference and other episodes of his discord with Muhammad, Abdullah ibn Ubay earned for himself the title of the leader of hypocrites in the Muslim tradition. Topic. Aftermath The Banu Kanaka left first for the Jewish colonies in the Wadi al Qura, north of Medina, and from there to Durs in Syria, west of Salkad. In the course of time, they assimilated with the Jewish communities, pre existing in that area, strengthening them numerically. Muhammad divided the property of the Banu Kanaka, including their arms and tools, among his followers, taking for the Islamic State a fifth share of the spoils for the first time. Some members of the tribe chose to stay in Medina and convert to Islam. One man from the Banu Kanaka, Abdullah ibn Salam, became a devout Muslim. Although some Muslim sources claim that he converted immediately after Muhammad's arrival to Medina, modern scholars give more credence to the other Muslim sources, which indicate that eight years later, 630, as the year of ibn Salam's conversion. Topic. See also. Banu Nadir Banu Qurayza Jihad Rules of War in Islam Topic Notes Topic References Encyclopedia of Islam ed P Berman et al Leiden Brill 1960 to 2005 Guillaume, A. The Life of Muhammad, a translation of Ibn Ishaq's Surat Rasul Allah. Oxford University Press, 1955. ISBN 0-19-636033-1. Donner, Fred M. Muhammad's Political Consolidation in Arabia Up to the Conquest of Mecca. Muslim World 69-229-247, 1979. Firestone, Reuven. Jihad, The Origin of Holy War in Islam. Oxford University Press, 1999. ISBN 0-19-512580-0. Ben Zvi, Yitzhak. The Exiled and the Redeemed. Jewish Publication Society, 1957. Peters, Francis E. Muhammad and the Origins of Islam. State University of New York Press, 1994. ISBN 0-7914-1875-8 Stillman, Norman. The Jews of Arab Lands, A History and Source Book. Philadelphia, Jewish Publication Society of America, 1979. ISBN 0-8276-0198-0 Watt, W. Montgomery. Muhammad, Prophet and Statesman, Oxford University Press. Mubarakpuri, Safi-ur-Rahman 1996. Ar-Rahik al-Maktam. Riyadh, Maktaba dar as-Salam. 